Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and in this video, I sort of beat the dinosaur game, but not really, but yes, I did. And so throughout this video, I'm just going to be going over my thought processes, my entire journey with this dinosaur game, combine them into this one large video. Hopefully it's entertaining enough for you to watch it, and any insights that I might say and you might gather, hopefully it will be important enough for you to keep on watching throughout the entire video. So let's get to it. I find that in any given classification problem, whether it be a simple binary or multi-class problem, applying a logistic model as a base model is definitely the way to go. It is often touted as the weakest model, but the backend and the logic of a logistic model is incredibly powerful. I managed to get a score of 154, however note that this is the best score I managed to get using the logistic model, and the average was typically around the score of 70. With the help of my good friend Zorian, we managed to get a PyTorch model up and running with a simple architecture. However, the inference time was just way too slow for this particular use case, so I threw out the possibility of using a neural network. A 1 millisecond inference time was just not fast enough. I needed something at least 10 to 100 times faster when it comes to inference times. So, when in doubt, go with XGBoost. This model was a best performant model, so I decided to stick with this algorithm and build upon it. I managed to get a score of 209, which was promising since I did not hypertune the parameters yet. However, as I was beginning to tune the model using various grid searches, the model did not really improve. So I went out and obtained more data, but it became to the point of where it was just too much data for my local computer to handle. So at this point, I was getting a bit frustrated because my model was not improving and I was doing a lot of different types of grid searches to try to get the best parameters. So I decided here that it was a good point to move everything to the cloud, partly because I could not run any more data on my own local machine because my machine was just not big enough. So I decided to go ahead and utilize a R512X large, which charges 12 or well, $3 an hour, but there's 48 cores and just about 384 gigabytes of RAM. So I believe that it was good enough for my particular use case, even though I won't be using all of my cores, uh, partly because there's just not enough memory to go around in this case. So I decided to go ahead and run it and see what happens. And just for the, for the content, <laughs> I already spent 30 bucks on this, but you know, I learned a lot and it was a lot of fun. After tinkering around with the AWS EC2 cloud instance, I retrieved the results of my optimized model and I tested it. I immediately noticed that the model was not as performant as the XGBoost model I previously had with unhyperparameterized parameters. So something was amiss with my new data. Therefore, I literally had to play hours upon hours of the dinosaur game to get about two gigabytes worth of great data. Note that I'm horrible at the game and my average score was around 500, so I hope that you can imagine the pain and frustration on the data collection portion. Now, if you have a large enough computer that you can actually just run XGBoost and you don't necessarily even need more data or like more RAM capacity, then by all means, you can just run this on your local machine and I have successfully did this. Um, and fortunately enough, I have a big boy machine. I have a 64 gigabyte RAM. <laughs> so it has enough memory to run small-ish chunks uh, of data, but I have two different scripts, one for binary outcomes and one for multi-class outcomes. So I can go ahead and run either or depending on the specific use case. And they are all Bayesian, uh, hyper-tuned, optimized, if you want to call it that. And also they are CPU and GPU compatible. Uh, so the, the expected output that you should be expecting is that a folder should be created. Uh, it should be called whatever you would want to call it. So a modeling and then whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then it will be iterating through however many iterations that you want. So in this case, I had 100 models uh, that are outputted inside of this specific directory. All of them were stored and all the results are stored in this CSV file. And this CSV file looks something like this. Uh, let's go ahead and maximize that and that. And it was, I already sorted it by log loss over here. And so this is technically my best model. And this is the model that I will actually be using in the uh, hyperparameterized Bayesian XGB underscore best model that we'll be seeing right after here. Uh, but essentially, you can um, you know play around with the other models as well to see maybe if there is like a like a better 
like a you know like a better instance of that model actually running in real time uh, you can go ahead and play around with that but i will be using this model one thing that i noticed when i was testing around with my models was that sometimes my models will not actually even run even though previous runs the dinosaur was successfully jumping at least a few obstacles in some cases there are no obstacles that the dinosaur like was successful and one of the reasons here was that the calibration was incorrect so you want to make sure that when you are testing out your model or even training your model you want to make sure that your zoom in or zoom out function within your computer screen is calibrated correctly and you're getting the correct pixels that are actually capturing the screen. And it's associated dinosaur and the cactus or birds that are coming on through. This is my trial run of my best hyper-tuned XGB model using the Bayesian grid search. And on GitHub, the model is labeled as XGB underscore best dot job lib, and it exists in the existing models folder. So I was quite happy about the outcome because, spoiler alert, I beat the 1000 point threshold far better than my usual score, and the model beat all the obstacles that the game had. There are of course a few special cases that the model did not consider, such as when to jump because there sometimes would be two cactuses lined up in such a way that the timing of your jump would determine the fate of your game. Nonetheless, the model generally solved the majority of the use cases such as single, double, triple, and quadruple cacti lined up. It also considered birds overhead at eye level and ground level. It also came to the point of where I needed to ensure the key, the up arrow key, was pressed for a duration of time to ensure the maximum probability that the dinosaur will have a full jump instead of a half jump. And these findings led me to this result of breaking the 1000 score. Also, I did not use a cloud for this particular tuning method, uh, particularly because Bayesian tuning is more effective than randomized or brute grid search. My model took my machine close to 12 hours to tune on 100 iterations, and the tune parameters from the Bayesian optimization was quite similar to the regular grid search. Trust me, I checked. And it only took a fraction of the time and memory. So would I be spending additional time on trying to get those edge cases down pat? Probably not, honestly. Um, instead, maybe in the future, I'll probably do a different model altogether related to reinforcement learning so that the actual dinosaur will actually learn from its mistakes in real time. And then hopefully it can get all of those edge cases down pat. Well, I'm glad to see that you made it to the end of this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like, hit that subscribe button with those notifications on. And if you have any questions or inquiries, let me know down in the comments below. And I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.